Mason, we spend a lot of time on this podcast talking about scouting. That's right, Jeff. We both know the importance of being trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. What? Not boy scouting, you knob. Scouting locations for photography. Oh, God. I guess I should take off this neckerchief then. Today, we're joined by Daniel Kennett, who is launching a new app called Photo Scout. It's an incredible app that makes planning for outdoor photography shoots a lot easier. You could even say it photo combobulates it. Uh, Daniel, pardon my friend here, he's got a case of the puns. <laughs> Maybe we could talk about something a little more interesting than, 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 than our puns here. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, first of all, let's also be clear, um, Photo Scout is going to be, uh, it's just iOS, is that correct? The, <clears throat> excuse me, good start. Uh, at the moment, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Hopefully Android in the future um, and on the Mac as well, certainly. But uh, for now, just just iOS, yeah. Okay, um, and uh, iPad also? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works on the iPad straight away, yeah. Excellent. Great, 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 great. Yeah, I've been using the app for a little while, Daniel, and and I want to say that it's 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 not a new idea, right? This idea of being able to tell when the sun or the moon or certain events are going to line up for your outdoor photography. But for me, I'm not highly technical, um, and so using something like the Photographer's Ephemeris or Photo Pills has always involved a pretty steep learning curve, and I never feel like I'm really getting much below the surface of the app. But with Photo Scout. It was really simple right off the bat. It was intuitive and it said, okay, it's basically saying, what do you want? I'll tell you when you can get it. And it, it was just straightforward and easy. <laughs> and I, I kind of caught myself thinking, there's got to be more to this. <laughs> this is supposed <laughs> to be harder. I imagine that there was more to it on the other side, in the development side. Um, well, so, so Daniel, j just to start off, can you give us a description of of what it does? Like uh, for people who are just listening to this, um, when this comes out, uh, hopefully the app will also be released at the same time, so they'll be able to go and get it. But what are we looking at here? Um, well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. Um, so, Photo Scout is uh, an app we built and. <clears throat> I'm really bad at the elevator pitch for this, even though we've been working on it for a year and a half. Sorry. But, uh, <clears throat> the idea is you you tell it what kind of photograph you want. Like um, our examples are like, you want to see the Northern Lights over New York, which is quite rare, but yeah. you need the clouds to be gone so you can actually see it and it needs to be nighttime. Or you want the sun in a particular place above a statue or a monument or something like that. Like Manhattan Henge is, is a common example mm. there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the idea is you tell it what you want and then you just leave it. And then when it's time for that photo to be taken, if you like, like when everything's ready, when the conditions are correct, you'll just get a push notification saying, hey, go back to that place at this time. And then the photo you want, like the conditions will be perfect and you're good to go. Um, yeah, our, our, our tagline, if you like for it at the moment is you say where we say when, <laughs> I like so it. the, the idea is, yeah, you say, I want a really beautiful sunset and I'm using my drone for this one. So the wind needs to be calm and, and so mm -hmm. on and so on. And then mm -hmm. you, you'll, you'll get notifications or you can see on a, in the app, like there'll be a graph of when everything lines up and you're good to go. Yeah. yeah that's one of the things I really appreciated about. Uh, getting to know the app was that it you can set different layers of conditions you just keep adding conditions to it you could be as simple as i just want the moon to be over this building and it'll say okay well that's going to happen on october 5th um, yeah. the moon will be over there but it doesn't say what phase the moon is and you can say oh wait i want the moon to be full okay well that's yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. happen then until this date at this time uh, and then you say well it needs to be clear <laughs> Right. And so you have layers of weather data, layers of uh, yeah, exactly. you know, astronomical data. And then, of course, you have all the location based stuff, too, which is yeah, it's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what we're launching with is um, like we have a big list of things that would be super cool, like oh, the the, uh, the space station or the planets or the Milky mm -hmm. Way or uh, there's just so many. But we, we have to start somewhere. So we're going <laughs> to eventually we decided to release what we have and then 
wait for the one star review saying oh it doesn't do x this is stupid and then we'll add add what people are the most angry about it's missing basically uh, <laughs> but, but i think i think we've got a good good kind of base yeah um of, of what's in there so you know yeah i was really sense. happy to see aurora forecasting in there because that's something you know jeff and i both live in somewhat northern latitudes not as north as you but you know, occasionally we'll get aurora um down this far south but the the apps that i've used in the past to forecast aurora is you know they're they're sketchy they're really difficult to understand and they're um you know hardly ever right and so your app has got this layer of aurora uh, forecasting in it that will alert me if it's going to happen it's, it's, yeah so so aurora's tricky like we're in a similar situation here in stockholm like we're, we're quite far south of the arctic circle so we we get the aurora occasionally but it's still quite rare where we live mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and sometimes i'll wake up and it'll be like, oh man i missed it last night so the tricky thing with about aurora forecasting is it's only accurate with i think the the, the lead time where it's accurate is measured in minutes Mm, so anything yeah. further than I think it's three quarters of an hour out is a guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's maybe 45 minutes. I'm not sure we're, what we're using, which is the US okay. uh, thing. Um, and that's actually accurate from 45 minutes or so. So we only really know that far out. So we, we have a forecast and then a, a more accurate reading. So the, the, the push notification that's quite quite important for that one. Um, well, yeah. and because you can layer it with meteorological, stuff you could if it's cloudy it won't wake you up in the middle yes, of the exactly night right it's exactly right so yeah, yeah check oh, out no, the aurora cloudy, and you go yeah. outside and you're like what yeah nothing <laughs> exactly, well yeah yeah well the thing that i appreciate about this is you know again being in seattle um i, I think we've actually gotten more auroras than i expect to um and you know occasionally there'll be some some great ones that you could actually see from seattle but mm -hmm. if you want to actually go see auroras um, and, and, you know, like, like I live in Seattle, that means I need to get in the car and I need to drive, you know, at least a couple of hours, either north or east to get away from the city lights and get to some open sky and see where it's more likely to, you know, be able to actually see it. Um, or, you know, at, at the very least, more likely to be able to pick it up on my camera. And so it's not just a matter of, oh, you know, the moon looks good. I'm going to step outside my house and go look at the moon. It takes a little bit of planning. Like you got to have a, if you're really serious about it, you got to have a go bag. You got to be ready to go. And having any kind of advance warning on that just makes a huge difference. And, you know, that, that also applies to, um, well, like, for example, I was in Portland a few weeks ago. And, you know, it, if I had known that, this, you know, sunset is going to be really worth get, going out for, or maybe this morning sunrise, I want to go to the Piddock Mansion and I want to shoot the sunrise. <laughs> you know, do I know for a fact that at, you know, 430 when I wake up, everything's going to look great? No, you got to kind of plan for it and to have at least any advance information helps because at some point you're going to be like, I don't want to get up. Yeah. I don't want to show up when it's all cloudy. There's that critical moment, right? Where you're laying in bed and you're warm and you're like, is it <laughs> worth me yeah. uncovering to go do this? And I don't know, Daniel, I don't know what it's like um, in Sweden where you're at, but here in the United States, we have a lot of great meteorological forecasting apps. We have a lot of things that work really well here, but we don't have one place where we can get all of this stuff bundled together, right? And everybody that has an iPhone now wants everything in one spot. We want a super mm -hmm. app, right? That gives us weather, location, astronomical, all this stuff. Right now, if if I'm, like Jeff is saying, if I'm laying in bed and I'm like, is it worth me getting up early to go chase the sunrise? Uh, I'm going to consult with three or four different apps before I make that call. And what Photo Scout seems to be promising is the ability to not wake up and then look at the apps, but have the app wake me up if it's worth getting up for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's amazing to me. That's yeah, great. That, yeah, that, that's kind of the idea. Like, as, <clears throat> like it was born from me kind of doing a similar thing. Like we we go, my wife and I, we go on a weekend trip and I'm like checking the weather and checking, you know, 
the the astronomy apps to where this and that are and if the milky way is visible and <clears throat> like a light pollution map to see if there's anywhere mm. nearby um we don't actually have light pollution yet but it's coming um like and it's just a pain checking four apps every few hours and yeah uh, yeah that, that was one of the things like we, we I, I don't know if you know our other app um so i'm i have a small business here in stockholm and uh, our other app is called Cascable, and it's for working with SLRs like Canons and Nikons and Sony's mirrorless mm. cameras. And it's like a remote control kind of tethering-y kind of workflow app. Um, <clears throat> and the the pitch there is you can leave your laptop at home and just use your phone or iPad. But the we have like an, a list of ideas. It's like it's a document, and we write an idea in, and then it'll sit there for years, or it'll get deleted because it's bad, or it'll get implemented because it's good. And this one, we just had like, oh, it would be cool to get a notification when the sunset is good or something. Mm -hmm. And that sat there for years. And it just ne it never went anywhere because it was a decent idea, but it was hard. Um, and like four or five years, it just sat there. And eventually we like one, you know, I was checking a bunch of apps. I was like, ah, we should do this. It's hard, but we should do it. It'll be fun. <laughs> I like the idea um i'm a few phds short of knowing all the maths needed for this but i i don't know it it, it was just kind of one of those that I, just, I wanted it and the idea never really left left my mind mm -hmm. so, so all right go on, we'll, we'll take a while but we'll, we'll give it a go um yeah um all right so yeah. the question is like how does this happen I mean, obviously, you're not going to say, well, here's how we've done it and here's how someone else can engineer an app to do it. But like, like, like what's involved in, in all this? Because I have a hard enough time, you know, just re remembering, you know, like what my little app that says what the what the cloud uh, layer is going to be and like like navigating that. So, like, how do you go about? predicting the weather <laughs> in thankfully oh that's a good question so thankfully we we can rely on others so there's mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of weather providers um like we we don't really have the expertise to do weather predictions ourselves um right i say ourselves myself we're, we're a very small company <laughs> <laughs> um, so like all all of our like data sources are external Mm -hmm. So like the 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 weather we use a company called AccuWeather, which you mm -hmm. may well have heard of in the US. And there's a bunch more, and we plan to add more because people sometimes have opinions on their weather provider. Um, <clears throat> so the the app, the, like the core, uh, I don't know the the core the core of the app isn't super duper complicated. So we we, we take weather if the user set up a weather in their thing, and we take Noah's aurora forecast if they've asked for forecasts and there's a thing called sunset vibrancy mm -hmm. um and we just kind of take all this in and then we just okay for weather in the next you know certain amount of time the users asked for no clouds and the weather service tells us there'll be no clouds like in these ranges of times and then you know we were on all of the things the users asked for and then we kind of merge it into like columns where they're all matched and then that output if you like is is the core of of what it is so that all these things the user asked for are true in this unit of time mm -hmm. yeah so, so it's an if this then that right pretty sort of much approach. yeah, yeah. And, and like we built a, a, a basic ish like engineering -y prototype in a month or two a couple of years ago and it worked okay but the rest of the year and a half of work from them until now is making it not terrible uh because <laughs> we found that like weather forecasting is inaccurate and variable as you know but then there's the you know there's a forecast and then there's the now and the now mm -hmm. is actually like a reading like it's a thermometer somewhere it's it's a reading somewhere so you know we could have the forecast say there's no rain but like a rain cloud goes through so when we get to now suddenly it's raining and then that would kind of bombard the user with notifications because it was changing all the time. Or if they asked for, like when, when we say clear skies, 
we figure like 20% cloud cover or less is, is mm. clear. Okay. And if it's just hit, if it's, the forecasts are just sitting on 20, 21, 19%, that would also bombard the user of a notification. So it's a ton of work with that, um, making the UI nice, like, you know, uh, lots and lots of things. So the, I think, you know, the core isn't super complicated, but the, the fingers crossed, like what I really hope is what, makes this nice to use and a pleasure to use and useful as we we do a lot of work to kind of filter and refine and you know be nice yeah um, is yeah. if i show you a screenshot of our engineering app it looks horrid like it's it's just like a horrible iphone list of like times um <laughs> and the, the app now is a list of times essentially but it's a lot lot nicer um yeah yeah, yeah the ui I mean, is very elegant and simple and i appreciate that as somebody who cannot handle clutter. <laughs> I just can't do it. <laughs> um, and I, I want to say that it's worth clarifying, uh, you know, and we really encourage people to try this app out, go, 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 go download it, check it out. One of the things that's really sets it apart from the other uh, photo planning apps that I've used is uh, you can create multiple scenarios. And so they're called scenes, right? Is that, that the yeah, right yeah, nomenclature yeah. I'm using? So you create a scene, you hit a little plus button and you create a scene and you, it's, it's a recipe. I want uh, this location, this weather, this astronomical, you know, whatever layers you want to add to it, uh, however complicated you want to make it. And it will tell you right away what your chances are of seeing that if it's a, a nearby event <clears throat> or if it's more of a distant event, like a, a lunar event or something like that. It's going to tell you a specific date. And you can just leave that in your in the app. You can just leave that scene and make another one. It's uh, all of the other apps I've used. It's right now. This is the thing we're talking about. This is what we do. When you're done, you make an, you just reset and start, a, start again. In this case, I could, I could make, you know, 30 or 40 scenes for my area around my house and say, wake me up if the aurora is going off and it's clear. Wake me up if the moon is right over the North Tower of this bridge. <laughs> you know, wake me up if, or give me a few hours notice if you think this is gonna work. And it's um, it's a set and forget type of thing that works really well with my type of, of approach to photography, which is opportunistic, right? I'm not out to make a photo today unless i can make a photo today it's 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 not a job for me it's supposed to be fun <laughs> so i i appreciate that and i want to just people to understand that it's it's a totally different kind of an approach and from what you were saying that's not easy to affect that um but this the simplicity of the app uh tells me that there's a lot of thought that went in behind it like you're saying it's 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 really pretty wild Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The, my um, my photography has become like that as well. I, I <clears throat> it, we work with cameras every day. Um, you know, with the other apps we work on and stuff. So, like with any hobby that's become a job, the actual fun part of photography is only like a, a small amount of time now because you know we we have work to do. So yeah. it's quite opportunistic for me as well. And sometimes the weather around here is beautiful, and sometimes you get auroras and sometimes you get beautiful sunsets and crisp white snow in the winter but sometimes it's horrid uh, so i i like this is born from the same thing like just wanting to so oh, if this happens that would be a super cool photo but like i don't want to check every day um mm -hmm. so yeah that, that's kind of kind of the idea and um we hope as well like photography is a very technical kind of pursuit you know the the Sure, you can put your camera in the green box and off you go, but but typically you don't, and then you got to care about a thousand other things. So we wanted the app not to be one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we we don't want the users to have to. <clears throat> it's clutter. Care, but like yeah. we we. We we joke it's the an app designed not to be used, right? You set it up and then you just you just look at it, like you don't touch it, you just look at it. Um, uh. So yeah, I, fingers fingers crossed. It's always very nerve wracking releasing a brand new app. Like mm -hmm. it's terrifying, but hopefully, yeah. it'll, it'll do okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like so, the, there are two things that strike me about this. One, and uh, I think we say this a lot: anything that's going to get you out and shooting is good because 
I mean, it, it, you can tell just from our conversation so far, it is so easy to say, you know, I am warm and I am comfy in my house, or mm. I've just made, you know, a hot beverage, or like, it's so easy to not do it. And to be able to have a reason that doesn't mean I have to restructure my entire weekend or my entire life because I need to go make photos. There's that friction of, all right, this has now gotten to be a lot more work than I expected. And now, all right, I'm going to go and maybe get a sunset, but ugh, I'm in a bad mood. And then you don't make good photos and it just sort of compounds itself. And so anything like this that will pop up and say, hey, you know what? Tomorrow night, you're going to have a good sunset or this this thing that you've wanted is coming up. You can plan for it and have a good chance of it being there and like all of that. Like that, that's great. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that I love the fact that you're not assuming that I, as a photographer, am also a weather expert. Everything else out there. It's like, we're going to give you all this data and here's where the sun's going to be and here's the atmospheric levels and the pressure and all of this. And I'm not a weather person. Granted, I should know more about the weather as a photographer and I'm trying to learn that. But I also, you know, like there are a million other things that I need to learn. And turning that around gives me that sense of, look, I can trust these guys because they know what they're talking about. And they can just give me the part, the good fun part, which is go out at this time at this location and you're going to get a good picture. And we're handling all the all the prediction and all that and the percentages and blah, 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 blah. You just go have fun. We're going to take care of all this. Yeah. And for some reason, I mean, I don't have a comprehensive knowledge of all the other apps, but all the apps very much seem to be the other direction. It's like, here's all the information, take it and do whatever you need to with it. And I'm just like, I'm going to drive around and see if I get a good picture. And then I'm going to go home and sulk. <laughs> We're going to go find some coffee somewhere. <laughs> We're yeah. going to go find some coffee. <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, and Daniel, I, I, I get the feeling that <laughs> you, you are just like Jeff and I, and that you have other things you, you'd rather be doing than wandering around hoping for a great photograph. <laughs> um, yeah it's really frustrating for me as a somebody who's who's passionate about photography but does not get to do it every day uh it's frustrating for me to to spend a morning or an evening kind of fruitlessly seeking the light that doesn't happen um but what's even more frustrating is and it happens probably once a month for me personally, where I'll be making dinner and my daughter will look out the window and go, daddy, it's a beautiful sunset. You should go take a picture. And it's what she doesn't know is that she's stabbing me in the back with a knife <laughs> <laughs> because I can't make a good picture from my house of the sunset. I need to drive for a half hour and mm -hmm. then I can make a pretty picture of the sunset. Oh, too late. So seeing the sunset <clears throat> out my window while I'm cooking dinner, you know, <laughs> it might as, might as well be Elvis running by, <laughs> you know, it's like, not going to get it. I missed it. It's too late. Um, so it, this app, I think, is a little bit of a, a, a great tool for those of us who maybe could shoehorn in a photo shoot if the opportunity existed. But we're not going to make that time every single day, mm -hmm. just in case, right? We just don't have that luxury. Now, uh, Jeff and I both know photographers who make a living photographing beautiful sunsets and sunrises and moonrises and moonsets over our respective cities. And they spend a tremendous amount of time scrutinizing the apps and saying, okay, I want the moon behind the space needle. This is one I've seen like 20 times this year. Mm. I want the super moon behind the space needle in Seattle. And I can, I know these three or four photographers are shoulder to shoulder on this particular hill, you know, <laughs> with their 1200 millimeter lenses, like shooting this time lapse. That's not me. I don't get to do that. I don't, I don't, that's, you know, I have kids, I have things I have to do, <laughs> but if my app pings and says, Hey, there's going to be a great sunset in a half hour, I might be able to throw my drone up 
I might be able to get out for 15 minutes and put things on pause and, and go grab that exceptional sunset and, you know, in 15 minutes, but I'm not going to block out three hours of my day every day mm -hmm. for that. <laughs> so this app is a great, is a great tool for this. Um, Thank you. But I want to add to that. So because you mentioned it really briefly and I want to circle <laughs> back around on it is we're not going to let Daniel talk. Sorry. We're not going to let him talk. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's late. Um, it's the drone aspect. None of the other mm. apps uh, mm. have a, have the drone in mind. And Jeff and I both fly occasionally, and and it's nice to to get beautiful drone photos. Um, to be able to have a parameter in the app that says, "Hey, it's also good flying weather," <laughs> is really really nice. Um, because sometimes that's the best way for us in an, in an urban environment, especially to get an interesting sunset photo or an interesting sunrise mm -hmm. photo. Um, and to know whether or not I can launch my drone <laughs> is, is really nice. So uh, here's an, here's an, here's an ask in this question. Mm -hmm. Um, right now I know it's, it's, it's a wind based. If the wind is under a certain amount, it's, yeah, it's yeah, good, yeah. good to fly. Mm -hmm. Um, are you going to be able to put in there at some point? a layer that says and where you're at it's actually okay to fly legally Ooh, interesting that's that's a good idea um <clears throat> that would be nice um <laughs> i don't know how complicated it is to get yeah. all of that data especially internationally um mm. that's a really good good idea um, yeah because because locally yeah. i know like over my house i know what the airspace is but if I'm traveling, I I'd have to go to yeah, another yeah, yeah. app. I'd have to open an FAA app or somebody yeah. else's app and look and look and see what that clearance is. So, I know that's a big ask, but that that would be another layer as a that's drone a really pilot. Good idea, yeah. That would, we, yeah. we were already planning on doing again another thing for the future that we didn't have time for for this um, is like if you set a location for say <clears throat> something in the sky at night, but you, you do it in the middle of a city. We we want to go. Hey, there's a ton of light pollution here. Mm. This is this is unlikely. Like, or if you ask for snow in the desert in the Sahara, it's like this is unlikely to ever happen. <laughs> and like adding, you know, if a thing that if it knows you want to fly a drone, hey, this is a no fly zone, or you need clearance here, or mm -hmm. what have you. No, that's just that's a really good, really good idea. I like it. Um, okay. Okay, so I, some, I some future. We'll have a look. Um, we'll have a look. Yeah, yeah. Have a look. <laughs> It'll get added to the big list. Yeah, added to, we'll add it to the big list. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I've got yeah. my one star review ready. <laughs> oh, no. No, That's... I won't. <laughs> It's not quite the approach we're going for here. That's not what we're going for. <laughs> <laughs> listeners, listeners, do not throw one star reviews don't, just don't to do. get your feature. Added. You can you can reach out I to really them shouldn't separately. Have said that, yeah. yeah, yeah, reach out to them separately. So, uh, yeah, yeah we, so, we, we joke because we have to joke or we'll cry. I think, like, yeah, uh, as a as a you know a very small business, it's this this app. You know, the apps we make keep the roof over my and my wife's head and like a couple of other employees and like seeing like one star this app doesn't have this hyper specific feature i want it's useless it's like ah oh. it's not one star though is it it's no, still a no. good app it's just not for you like, <laughs> you take a star good. away but you don't yeah yeah sure yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly exactly this yeah. would be good if it had this or this would be better if it had this is is much nicer to see, but yeah. right, right, right. Um, also, am I correct in this? Um, so this has let me just start over. Uh, so am I correct in this? So this is uh cloud synced. So if I build a whole bunch of different things and then install it on my iPad, uh, all of those things will show up on the iPad too. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. great. And and you didn't you had a fleeting mention of a Mac based um app eventually so we could sit on our big screen and, and do these sorts of things in the future right perhaps. now you can if you have an apple silicon mac you can install it oh right um, that's right now on an apple silicon mac but it's effectively just running the ipad app on your mac right so that's it fine. works but it's it's an ipad app in a box basically so yeah. we, we i started my career as a developer as a mac developer so i want to make a really nice mac app and we will do eventually but right now Excellent. Something is better than nothing, so so it works yeah. in your Mac too. Um, yeah. Well, and definitely. my sense is yeah. that most people, almost everybody, has a mobile device that they're going to use. Not everybody yeah, has yeah. a desktop that they employ for that sort of stuff. So exactly, yeah. you're hitting the yeah. you're hitting the low fruit. Um, I just want to 
plumb a little bit down the side, down the business side, because I think that it's yep. easy for us as um, as consumers to look at the app store and look at apps and say, oh, four ninety nine a month or thirty nine ninety nine a year or whatever. Oh my God, you know, it's just a death by a thousand cuts. Yep. I want to get your perspective as a developer and as a business owner. Um, you know, it it sounds like it, it sounds like lots and lots of time, years of work have gone into this app. Um, and it, when you go to price an app like this, uh, it, you can just throw whatever you want at the wall and see what sticks, right? Um, yeah, we can, yeah. Can you talk about your pricing structure and how that's going to sustain the product and 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 you as a business person? Yeah. So um, maybe to give a bit of a little bit of context, if that's helpful. Um, we our our bread and butter app at the moment is the Cascaville app I spoke about before, um, <clears throat> which very quickly is a tool for working with Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus, um, mm -hmm. six manufacturers plus Phase One. I'm forgetting two of them. Um, and that app is very much like a professional workflow app and automation. You can automate your camera like very workflowy. You know, get work done with us and. Traditionally, traditionally, you would make an app, you know, back, back in the days before the app store, you'd make an app, <clears throat> sell it, and then version 2.0, you'd sell an upgrade to people at a discount if they wanted the new one. Otherwise, they, they'd they keep what they had, no mm -hmm. trouble. And that was kind of a way of sustaining ongoing development and sustaining the business because you can, you know, charge people again, but they get new features and they get a discount and... Th that worked really well. Like people were like as happy as they could be when you're asking for more money again. Um, cause if they didn't want to pay, they could just keep what they had yeah. and then it was fine. Um, unfortunately the app store makes that model really difficult. Um, you can technically do it, but it's very difficult because you can't prevent somebody from upgrading to the newest version. So you have to build that logic of whether they've upgraded or not into the app. So you mm. have, it, it just becomes very complicated. Um, so instead, um, and what did happen in the early days of iOS was a race to the bottom. So just prices came down and down and down and down. It just wasn't sustainable. That seems to have kind of, it's not over, but it's it's better now. Like we charge, mm -hmm. so so for for that workflow app, we let the users choose. We sell them a one off purchase um, for sixty dollars, sixty US dollars, or they can subscribe. Mm -hmm. um, and unhelpfully for switching to one or the other, the split is about fifty fifty. So like half of our users choose to pay sixty dollars and have it, and then half of our users roughly choose to subscribe because they can. It's cheaper for a shorter amount of period. There are some benefits for the user. Um, we can't promise to the sixty dollar one time purchase that they'll get all the upgrades forever, right? Because that's not like forever is a very difficult word. Like <laughs> which, like my forever, or like I mean. In sixty years, the I mean, I'm I'm probably going to be gone. Like you, know, <laughs> like it's kind of difficult. So we we just promise that it's always the most value for money, and like mm -hmm. maybe we'll introduce a few. We haven't yet, but maybe we'll introduce a very very big new feature in the future that needs another payment or something. But we haven't done yet. With Photo Scout, the the and 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 that model with Cascable has been working okay for us. Like it's been working okay. Like the combination of the one-off purchases and the subscriptions, we have some recurring revenue plus one-off payments and, it, and it's okay. Like it's, you know, we're not in a desperate need to re revamp our business or anything like that. It, it, it's good. Um, we'll, we will see what kind of firestorm happens if we ever do try to charge for a new feature to the, to the, the folks that aren't subscribed, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge for the, when we come to it. Yeah. Um, but for photo scout, the, we can't offer the one-off thing because it just costs money to run like mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> the weather data, the, the, um, the, the sunset vibrancy data, all that kind of stuff like costs us money per, like every time we talk to the weather provider to get a weather forecast that costs money. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Not a lot, but it but it adds up like with with you know hundreds of users, thousands of users. The more scenes they make, you know, um, it just costs more. And there's no way for us to do like a non subscription purchase there and not go underwater. Yeah. Uh, on, on that particular user. And, you know, I personally don't like subscriptions either, but I also like the roof over my head. So like, we, <laughs> we, we, we have to make money just to pay the bills. Um, so we, we've gone subscription only on this. Um, we, we've done a, and on top of those data providers as well, this app has a server, like there are servers running mm. and the way they work is they, they run like the core app on the mm. server and then, um you know if, if the the server sees that there's a a match for the user scene coming up it'll issue a push notification and whatnot um but the only way to do that is to just do it over and over and over again so when your scenes are synced they're they're in our server as well and every um every few minutes it will pull that scene it will run it it'll get the weather data for it and then it'll see um and yeah so that that we'd, we'd we have no choice but to work it like that. Um, so even if you're not using the app, like we're requesting weather data on your behalf to, to see if that's going on. So that it just it just costs money over time. Um, and our hope is that we can price it such that the because there's, there's going to be the user that sets up a thousand scenes and costs us hundreds of dollars a month. Um, <laughs> but hopefully, on average. The amount we charge minus the amount the app costs is is a positive number. Yes, a positive number. So, so, <laughs> so, so left over for us each month. Yeah, no, we want a positive number to go into our bank account, right? Yes. Um, so yeah, and we've put a little exp- I've put a little explanation in the app, just kind of explaining that you know, like we have to go subscriptions just because it costs money every minute it's run. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and hopefully we'll we'll do. We might have to adjust the price um up or down as things goes on hopefully i think we're okay but we'll see as it scales and more people use it um Mm -hmm. yeah uh we have we we have two kind of tiers as well so if somebody just wants something really basic they can pay less money and they get less scenes and less we run their scenes less often so we're Mm -hmm. paying less in weather data um Mm -hmm. or, or the like the full tier we run it more yeah. often you have unlimited scenes and widgets and blah 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 so um yeah but, but it, it's going to be a uh, a balancing act i think like i hope we've got it right because changing price is it, like kind of sucks for everybody involved um mm-hmm. <clears throat> especially if we, like the app store is nice for the consumer because if we go down everybody gets a cheaper price the next time they're renew. but if we go right. up the user like we can set it up so people who subscribed at the lower price keep the lower price. Um, mm-hmm. So we will think, f- but fingers crossed we got it right. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm a programmer, not a business person, really. So we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah, I have to wait and see, um, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Well, just to read that back because I, I think it's, it's. Sorry, that's a, consum- a very long-winded answer. No, yeah. no, <laughs> it's, it's a great answer because it's very illuminating. Because as a consumer. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on back there. I don't know. I don't know how much your work you're putting into it. It's it the uh, perception a lot of times with apps is that they're uh, somebody built it once and they threw it out there and they're just hoping it sends them a bunch of money every month. Yeah, and yeah. that's all they have to do. And they're often working on their next project. The the knowledge that um, there are hard costs associated with every scene that you create in the app. Um, you know, that's going to, right now I've got like six scenes that I made just playing with the app. Well, now I'm going to go delete the ones I really don't want. No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm, well, I'm, but, but it's something I've, I've got to think about as a consumer. It's like, is this a, what I don't want is to really fall in love with this app and have you be in a year go, man, this was a stupid idea. <laughs> um, we've lost, you know, fifty thousand um, dollars in weather data charges. In weather data, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to just stop supporting the app, and and it it's going to go to a, a native app instead of a cloud based app, right? So what's not happening is my phone isn't sitting there crunching data every no. five minutes. No. And no. you're doing all that on the back end, yeah, that's right. And that's saving me battery. That's saving me 
uh, bandwidth and all of that data and all of that stuff. So, you know, those are savings on my end and costs on your end. And appreciating that is important, I think. Um, that was not something I, I picked up from reading the, the stuff that I read in the app. So, um, you know, maybe people hearing this will appreciate more of the work put into it and, and the work that goes on behind the scenes to keep it running. It is Fingers worth crossed, the, yeah, it is yeah. worth the money. Um, oh, thank you. you know, if you think about the time, you know, my time is isn't that valuable, but it's somewhat it's got a value. <laughs> and <laughs> if I'm time spending, is valuable. <laughs> is my, some of my time is valuable. So if I'm spending an hour scrutinizing five, five different apps to determine whether or not I go out and shoot the sunset, um, instead of just waiting for that push notification to tell me it's a green light, then uh you know, I, it, that's time saved on my end. And so that has value. So I think the days of expecting that a free app is going to be the end all and beat all tool for photography is, is really pretty naive. Um, I think we have to, we have to pay for these things. And I think the subscription makes sense because it's an ongoing service. It's not just an app, right? It's a service. And that's yeah, important yeah. to keep in mind. Yeah, on a personal level, I try to avoid subscriptions for software as well because, <clears throat> like you said, it's death by a thousand cuts. There's so many, and we avoid it where we possibly can. But in the, in this case, we just kind of have to. Like, <clears throat> I really like this idea, and my sincere hope is we can build it and add more things to it, and and grow it, and it's a really cool tool. Um, I yeah, yeah. I w can, can you do us a favor though? Jeff and I both are coffee nuts. Don't, oh, yeah, yeah. don't ever in the marketing say it's less than a cup of coffee because we're like, well, <laughs> coffee's worth a lot to us. So, I, don't, I've seen don't how minimize, coffee yeah, can be. Don't I'm minimize just... that logic. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the old uh, NPR thing. You know, you, you don't even think about how much you spend on coffee. Oh, hell yeah, I think about how much I spend on coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I have a question and I suspect the answer is no. So I, I'm not trying to like, like put this in a bad light, but um, as we're talking, you're getting all sorts of sources from, from various weather services and you're processing and all that on a server. Uh, what happens if I am out of range? Mm. So, so I've, you know, gone to the middle of some desolate place to go shooting is there a way for me to, 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 you know, maybe save the fact that I know that the moon is going to be in, I don't know. I can't even think of good examples. The moon's going to be over this, like, like amazing sand dune, whatever, but it's going to be in the middle of the desert. Um, and I may not have uh, a connection there, but can I set this up so that I will know, all right, according to this, my best chance is to be at this location on this day at this time, um, even though it may not be updating, you know, constantly because I've I've gone out of range. But I at least have that that marker, mm. and then the rest of it is sort of going back to, all right. Well, now I'm going to take my chance and hope that I that I get a good situation because I've I've had more information to get me there. Does that sound um, about right? Yes, that, that will work with some caveats. So the <clears throat> if you open the app and you see your list of scenes and you can tap on one and you'll see uh, like a, a graph of the next few days with some like lines showing you sort of, you know, if you've got rainfall or what have you or mm -hmm. um, any weather, it'll show you like, you know, your cloud, this is the cloud cover and it'll go up and down. And there'll be like purple boxes on that chart of time if you like and those boxes are when everything matches that is run on device so you don't need a server for okay. that mm -hmm. um <clears throat> the caveat is that the so you won't get notifications because they do require like you know we, the server needs to get to your device so right if you don't open the app you'll come back into range and again get, get a ton of notifications and be sad basically because you missed everything <laughs> but, uh, the, we we do like the app itself does run on device so all all the calculations are done locally okay if you can't connect to the network to get weather or what have you then you'll get kind of like a dotted box mm. and that's like okay with the information we have here is the time but we don't know because we don't know what the weather is so it's okay. kind of like a a partial match if you like like a best chance um yeah 
if everything you set up requires some kind of network connection, so like if you want Northern Lights while it's clear, those are both like we need to get a forecast from somewhere for those, mm-hmm. so you'll get nothing. Um, the app does save the last route weather report it got for a while, mm-hmm. like it'll cache that for a while, so you will have some data there, but eventually that will that will run out. So we do the best we can. Um, okay. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds as if I'm not just going to be uh, going out into the middle of nowhere and not having any information. No, like, no. You even can, if you it's partial do... information, even if it's a, a a direction and a rough time, then that gets me there. And then that still, you know, gets me to that point where, hey, I am out in nature and I might get totally skunked, <laughs> but maybe not. Uh, maybe it'll be amazing, which is kind of what happens now if you don't use any of these services. Yeah, like, yeah. So, and, you know, I mean, there, there's value in that too, just just being out there. And, you know, as photographers, uh, we have all had times when everything looks great and then like some low clouds roll in and then everything just goes all to crap. And mm-hmm. that's okay. That That's part of the experience. But being able to yes, have yeah. more information and a better chance of seeing what I'm going after can make a huge difference, even if it's not yeah, up yeah. to the minute. And, and even if you're out there, like, and you want, oh, oh, this is a really cool, like where I'm standing now is really brilliant. Um, like the sun position and, and all those kind of things, face of the moon, position of the moon, all that kind of stuff is all local. That doesn't need a network. So you can actually set that up while you're there. And even with no mm-hmm. internet oh, okay. and you can see if, if, um, if, uh, if you can get it while you're there. No, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's I, I do want to talk about, um, you know, the use, the use of the app in, you know, on the ground. Um, cause there's one thing to sit at home and be like, I'm dreaming of these scenarios and let me know when it's going to happen. Um, one of the ways I've always used these apps is leaning really heavily on the AR, the augmented reality part of it, where you're holding up the camera and you're, you're pointing it at the, at the bridge or whatever. And you're like, when is mm-hmm. the moon going to be right there? Yep. And so that's what I did yesterday is I went to the location where I would take the actual photo and I used the AR and, and lined up the moon. And it's really cool. Uh, I haven't seen any other app do this where you basically say, I want uh, this type of moon phase and I want it to be in this part. And you draw a box in the sky, right? Or, or you can expand or contract that box in the sky. And it will calculate when the moon will be within that box in the phase that you've described. That's right. Yeah. Um, now, what you just told me is that that's all a local calculation. That's something I can do without a cloud connection or an internet connection. That's right. Yeah. Um, that is a wonderful tool. Uh, and I've done this so many times when there's been a celestial event, like an eclipse or something like that, or a special full moon. I've gone around neighborhoods and just stood there with my phone and like, no, it's not going to line up right. So I walk down the street. <laughs> with it and I, oh, it's not going to line up right. And I do this a lot. All of that is to say is, you know, at this particular time of this particular day, is the moon going to be right there? That's always been the approach that I've taken. I know that there's going to be a full moon, a special full moon at a certain time. Can I find a way to line that up? What I love about your app is I can go to that location and say, just tell me when the moon's going to line up the way I want. Don't make me do all this walking around. <laughs> right? Don't make me do all this. <laughs> and it will say, yeah, November, November 6th. And, you know, it'll be dark. The moon will be full and it'll be mm-hmm. right there. Um now, what's not on that layer is, will it be cloudy or not? And I can add that requirement if I want. But yeah. my first question is, is it possible for me to get the moon lined up right here? And all the other apps I've used are like, no, you have to work <laughs> to figure that out. And this one's <laughs> like, yeah, it's possible, just not today. <laughs> it's going to be a while. I think, I think you're going to you're gonna have to add in, in the next version another layer so that uh, you know that that when Mason is out wandering neighborhoods randomly, <laughs> whether there have been any any <laughs> any police reports of a of a weirdo uh, <laughs> pointing his phone at people's houses, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a little notification. <laughs> the cops are on their way. You might yeah. want to leave now. Yeah, yeah. There's another requirement. <laughs> Let me know if I'm being tracked. Um, <laughs> It's just it's it's just a really useful tool, and I'm 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 jazzed to use it. Um, I want to ask though, <clears throat> in this planning mode, you know, where I'm saying I want to 
you know, have the, I have a location, right. And I'm using this augmented reality and I'm, I'm aiming my camera phone at the, at the bridge and all of that. Um, one of the things that I really like is that it'll tell me opportunities. It'll give me specifics, like it's going to be available on this date, or it'll say, you know, your next available conditions are here and here and here. Um, what I haven't done yet and I want people to understand this with your your app is what makes it different is I can set up all these things in the planning mode. And then down at the bottom of the scene, I've set my requirements and all that. And then there's this section on notifications. And that's the part that I think is really fun is um, I can do all this planning and it tells me, hey, your moon isn't going to line up with your bridge until November. I'm like, great. I'm not going to remember that. Right. So I can click here and it says I can have it notify me the day before or an hour before, and I can even have it a custom sound. So this is something I've really started to leverage with my phone as I get older. <laughs> like I want you to tell me when I need to be somewhere. And um, this app will do that. And no other planning, no other photo planning app gives me that. I'd have to go set a custom notification in my reminders or my calendar or whatever. Um, so I really appreciate that that feature. That is that running on the cloud or is that native? So if I lose my um, internet signal <laughs> or lose my cellular signal, am I still going to get those notifications? Are they set in my calendar or whatever? Or is that a cloud-based no, notification? No, not. So... <clears throat> And that's a good idea, but no, we the notifications is is all server based right now. Um, okay, okay. On iOS, so the 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 tricky thing and and the reason we don't do any background processing on iOS is because um, <clears throat> as so iOS is really 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 focused on battery life and efficiency. Yeah. So you can right. ask the operating system to like, hey, can you just run this little thing like in an hour? Um, and and we get the opportunity to wake up and just do a little bit of processing, and and we could do it locally like that. But that's whether we get that is very heavily dependent on basically the well, I'll say the phases of the moon, but this is an app for that, so that would be <laughs> like like whether we get that or not is very up to the operating system. And as you stop using the app we're less likely to get that background time until we don't get any background time. And for an app like this, that's potentially the user wants to just use it for an hour, set it all up and then leave it. Mm. Like we have no guarantees we'll ever be able to wake up again if the app isn't actively used by the user. Mm. So we made the decision to do all that kind of stuff on the background. Okay. I'm sorry, in, in the server. Um, so it's pushing it's, to the phone. It's yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, <clears throat> it's really good for battery life as well because we just send the notification and nothing else. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it does have the the downside of needing an internet connection for when the notification comes. Um, we do have the widget, which you can put on your home screen and that will just always be there. Mm -hmm. um, um, I like the calendar idea. Uh, mm -hmm. The tricky thing with the calendar is the if you have an event for them, they change so much that your calendar will just always be changing. Um, yeah. And you get notifications yeah, that your calendar changed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, um, ah, you know, silence, to... silence, silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So <laughs> we need to be careful about that. But um, yeah. yeah, it's one of the, the, the tricky things about iOS in particular is reliable background execution. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, um, another thing I hadn't thought of. <laughs> I, I should know this question, but I, or no, I, I I should know this question. I should know this answer. <laughs> <laughs> I should know this question, but I don't have. I anything. hope you know it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, is there a a an Apple Watch component to this, or or maybe that that's something in the future? Other than, of course, just getting notifications. No, not yet. But we we. That's a good idea. Yeah, we, it's. I'm not sure what we would do. Maybe just because we thought about a little viewer where because you got those like if you open the iOS app you have the cards you can just like kind of flick through those on your watch that would be nice. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we we haven't really thought about a way to do it well. Yeah, especially like because yeah. Apple love to push the especially with the big watch the 
outdoorsy kind of hiking kind of thing. Yeah. So it would be nice to kind of hook into that, yeah. I think. Um, I was just thinking like, you know, a, a, a widget that you can put on there that will say, this is the next photo scout opportunity that's coming up. Sort of like, I, I mean, like now I, I have the, the the sunrise and sunset just so that mm -hmm. I know, you know, oh, sunset's yeah, going to be idea. at this time. Yeah, a complication that says you have a complication. You have a scene mm -hmm. coming up in three hours, you know, or the, your next scene is on this date at this time. Um, okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got the the outdoorsy watch, right? So I could, oh, I, yeah, could I have room for that you. on my big screen. I know it's so fancy. <laughs> I'm so outdoorsy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I it's it's I hadn't even thought of the watch, Jeff, until you bring it up, and this this brings me to another I, another comment. Um, so much of the iPhone, I mean, going all the way back to Steve Jobs uh, announcing the first iPhone and saying, you know, you don't even know how much you need this, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, as a photographer, I'm, yeah, nice. you've got that. I've got mine in the drawer back there. Original. Uh, <laughs> hanging on to yeah. it. Um, <laughs> That's your current phone, right? That's what you use every day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mason. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I tried starting mine up a while back and it wouldn't even try. Um, so as a photographer, uh, I mentioned that I don't like clutter. Um, my creative process works best when things are very simple and easy. And I have found that w adding a smartphone into the process, and I've mentioned this many times in this interview, it has made it more complicated um, to the point where I almost have gotten a bit uh, resentful of the technology and be like, I just, just leave it in my pocket and not, mm. not look at it. Um, and I think that the simplicity of this app makes it more appealing to me, um, especially for the planning aspects and the fact that it's just going to, it's just going to be a simple push notification when it's time to go. Um, that sort of thing. I, uh, I'm wondering if we are headed, you know, thinking long term and we're going to throw out AI and all of these terms that we like to talk about on this show. Um, are we headed to a place where we don't sit down and do planning in these apps where, you know, Photo Scout 2026 is, um, hey, we know you're a photographer, you paid for this app and we know where you are. These things are happening to tomorrow, or these things are happening later today, where you're just going to get push notifications based on past behavior or past interests. And you're not going to be thinking about, I want the moon to line up with that bridge. You're going to be thinking about, I just want to take cool pictures and I don't want to worry about all this stuff. Um, where does all this go? <laughs> I'm asking to look way over the horizon, but you're you're a guy that's looking over the horizon. Where does all this go? That's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> that's, sorry, that's not very helpful. So right now, you just we... added you just added hours and hours and months. Of I know. Work. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we are one thing. I really want to get in for 1.0, which we haven't done yet, and as of recording, is two weeks away. Um, <clears throat> is is kind of that but much simpler mm. so like because if you're just somewhere or maybe you're going somewhere and rather than setting up like a sunset one and a, a northern lights one or a crescent moon one you can just push a button and tell it a location it's right okay so interesting things that are happening today and tomorrow where you where you are or where you said are there's a really really strong sunset like the 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 moon is full or the the northern lights are very mm -hmm. common like just just like interesting stuff so if you don't if you just like oh, just tell me interesting stuff that might be happening i don't know um it can do that and we really want to do that um but that's not ai that's not the the, the right now we don't want to know where you are like we we're trying to build this in a mm. privacy focused way so mm. we don't know your email address. We don't know anything about you. But the problem is we do need to know the location to run it on the back end. So if you yeah. call something home and then put the pin on your house, then in our server is a location and the word home. Now, we don't know who you are, 
so we only know it's somebody's home but right you know we we we, we don't want to know just I, there's no reason for us to know like we're, we're right. building an end-to-end encrypted thing because we want photos as well like you know the little graphics we have we want you to be able to put a photo of your own there right so you can actually see what the scene is that you're you're taking your picture of but having somebody else's photos on your server mm. is just a nightmare so we we just want to end-to-end encrypt it so we don't actually have your photos we just have like an encrypted blob that we can't get at because you care mm. about your photos we we don't want to know that. we don't um, yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> so this this kind of ai thing is is kind of tricky because that needs to kind of keep track of where you're going and where you are and, mm-hmm. and it would be cool it would be cool it'd be cool um, i i I, but... I feel like um i feel like i've ceded a certain amount of my privacy to technology and i'm okay, I'm, I'm comfortable with that like location mm-hmm. data um you know, I I am a little creeped out that I might mention something to my wife in the kitchen and two days later it's a Facebook <laughs> ad, right? Yeah. That part creeps me out. But my phone with an app that I purposefully bought for photo planning, knowing that I'm going to Costa Rica in two weeks and I'm going to be there for this span of time because it's on my calendar and all my flight data is on my calendar. And <laughs> I've told the app that it's okay to look at my calendar. Um, I think it would be really cool to have something pop up. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's in a widget, um, where it Mm -hmm. says, Hey, um, you know, on Sunday night, looks like it's going to be an awesome sunset where you're headed. (laughs) Yeah. I can, I can see that being a really useful bit of, and I don't feel, I don't feel intruded on with that, but that's Mm -hmm. me. Um, I also don't have a bunker, (laughs) 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 you know, I'm not. I'm not wearing a foil hat when I sleep and that sort of stuff. So yeah. um, maybe I'm more permissive, but I think that that, that type of, uh, and the AI part of it would be, we we know that this is the type of thing that you enjoy. You've asked mm-hmm. for this uh, and your behaviors, you know, we're reading your behaviors and your, you know, when you're awake and when you're not and all of that, and we're, we're paying attention, but you know, it's just uh, looking over the horizon. That's that's the stuff I think about. Like, what are we? What are we not? What do we not know that we need yet? That we're going to someday be like, I don't know how we live without this. Yeah. Well, yeah, and be cool. I'm I'm really glad you brought that up, and I'm really glad that you answered it the way you did, Daniel. Because knowing how this data is actually being handled is another core component, especially when you have something that is location focused, mm-hmm. and I mean, honestly, I I should have thought of this and I didn't think about it because I make the assumption that that for an app like this from a developer that I trust that, you know, my my location isn't going to be given away or, uh, you know, aggregated to something else. Um, But it's, it's great to hear you say that, no, we're we're working on setting up something that has an end to end encrypted uh, you know, st- stream of data because we don't want to know where you are. You want to know where you are, and we can give you some information based on that. But you know, we don't have to do that, and you're not going to. Well, you're a business owner. Maybe you will, but I'm assuming that you're not going to be like, hey, you know, I can sell all this geographic data to a, a firm that will, you know, hoover up all this stuff on my users, and you know. I mean, I'm assuming that that is not your secondary revenue source for this app. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, if we um, <clears throat> like the uh, 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 like not wanting to have your data is all is it's you know I, we we can I can say that I'm a very very trustworthy super nice person, but I mean there's no reason for anybody to take me at my word for that, right? But yeah. <clears throat> Kind of selfishly as well. If we don't have any data, we can't leak it. If like, right? You know, we get hacked because you know we do our best. We do a, a very good faith effort to do the best we possibly can. But you know, every it seems like everybody gets hacked at some point. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. if we don't have the data, we can't accidentally, you know, leak it or you know have it taken by hackers or you know, just make a mistake, you know? Yeah, right. Um, so 
if we don't have the data to start with, we can't, you know, um, we're, we're kind of safe in that way. Yeah. If we do make a mistake and, you know, we get hacked <clears throat> and all of the scenes are listed, it's just a, a list of locations and there's no personal data next to it. Um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of a liability thing as well. And like with the images thing, there's... If you ever build anything that lets a user upload a picture, you're going to get a bad picture pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. And like, we, we don't want that. Like, and we don't want to deal with the legal ramifications of any of that. So mm -hmm. we, if we end to end encrypt them, they're not pictures anymore by the time they get to us. It's just, just garbage data that we still, um, so that saves us from that headache as well. So yeah. there's like on a personal level, I. I like privacy focused apps and I want to do my best, but also from a company level, if we don't ha have anything, we just save ourselves the, the effort and the, the headache and the liability of, you know, actually looking after that data yeah. safely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, I'm, I, I'm really glad that we've gone down this little rabbit hole too, because I suspect that there's probably some people who are listening to this who probably thought, oh, it's a neat app that takes some weather information and mixes it together and shows you, you know, oh, here's here's a good sunset. Uh, and I love that we've really shown that, no, there's a lot more to it. It's not just grabbing public data sources and and, you know, throwing them together. It's interface. It's user experience. It's, uh, you know, data security. It's, um, you know, figuring out all the computing resources on the back end and how that's mm -hmm. going to affect uh, the, the cost of running the business and like all of these things that most people don't think about. But I think photographers can think about because we also end up thinking about things like where are our pictures going and, you mm -hmm. know, um, where does my my gear come from? And like it, I think it slots together well, but it's good to have it out there and said so there aren't any false assumptions. Yeah. 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 Like we, we, we have like a privacy policy on our website and <clears throat> we've just, I've just basically just written everything we do. Like, you know, because, and we say like we, if you write the word my house or like Daniel Kennett's house and then the location of your house, then technically we have that data, but like we, everything else is all anonymous and things um i the the point of it being horrendously complex on our side is that there's a quote from somebody and i forget who said it i apologize um and it's i'm sorry for the long letter i didn't have time to write a short one mm -hmm. um <laughs> and that like we, we could have delivered an app that told you this like a year ago but we've but making it simple and easy to use and you know with decent data kind of behaviors and and all this is just taking so much time to get it right because it's just a ton of work like the has this yeah it yeah. is and it's kind of an odd thing about software development like the quite often if you see an app uh, on any platform and it looks like really sleek and I was like, oh that doesn't do much versus an app with like a million buttons everywhere like often the the like the the, the oops excuse me the, the simple app has had like a ton of work put into it so hmm. there aren't a thousand buttons everywhere and it just does what you want it to do um so it's, it's kind of an interesting part of software development i think yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well and I appreciate, and uh, you know, this is something that that I look for in apps is the the craft of it. And this has been an issue with Mac software you know, and iOS software going back. There is an intrinsic experience to it, and you can tell when something has been refined and iterated such that it seems very easy for you as the user, as the person doing it that you know that no there's a whole bunch of work that's gone into it and i mean i'm you know much more likely to you know, support apps that have craft even apps that i probably won't even use very much you know you'll have something that comes up on daring fireball or something it'll be like oh well if john really likes how this is crafted then it deserves a look and i think that's that's a big deal
Okay. Well, I think another thing I, I want to add to that, Jeff, is the <clears throat> when I get an app that is technical, like like this type of app, um, the the help functions, the tutorials, the supporting information that that is or is not included with the app uh, tells me a lot about how much has been put into the app. And I, you know, I just wanted to point out that there is a huge <laughs> uh, under the under the little help icon. There's a huge amount of resources here on every aspect of this app. And they aren't just, you know, um, the basics, like they're full descriptions with with images. And it's really well put together and well thought out. Um, Daniel, you don't, you don't know this, but I teach a lot of photography classes and I'll point apps, I'll point people to apps a lot of times. I'll be like, hey, get this app and and I'll get an email from two weeks later, like, I got that app. I don't get it. Can you help me with it? And I'm like, oh, God, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I would point people at this app and say, if you have questions, hit that question mark button because the answer is in there. And I would know that they're going to find out what they need to find out. Oh, that's good. Um, so that's an important part of this. So in, in, aside from the user interface and the functionality of the app and the smoothness of, of all of that, the fact that you have taken a very complicated series of functions, simplified them, but then backed them up with education really makes it a full featured app. And this is, this is brand new. This is V1, right? So yes, yeah. I can't imagine where we're going to be looking at in four years, right? It's going to be amazing. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I just picked my phone up then because um, a fun, I guess, fact Depends how fun you are, I suppose. But um, <laughs> every photo in the app I or my wife took, except oh. one, which came from a stock photo site. And in my eyes, it sticks out like a sore thumb because <laughs> <laughs> I guess all the photos we take have their their own kind of personal style to them. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh, and then the one that I didn't have an example photo for, I had to use a stock photo site. And it, um, it, it, to me, obviously, because I didn't take it, it like really sticks out. But uh, um, <laughs> that's I don't funny. Know. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, there you go, that's listeners. Awesome. Now you have a scavenger hunt. Find, yeah, yeah, yeah. find so that photo. Find, um, find the picture that <laughs> Daniel did. Well, take. I just started looking. I was like, "Where is it?" So, um, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, go ahead. Sorry, go. On. No, you go, Jeff. So I was going to say, like the the um, the sunset ones. We have some examples. So they were. So one of the services we use for sunset vibrancy gives just a number. So like today's sunset will be seventy-two percent vibrant. It's like that is not that is not useful. So <clears throat> I ended up sending up my drone above my house every single day for about three months. So okay, wow. seventy whatever percent is this photo, and ah. so just to kind of get an idea of what that meant. Um, and you, you made a comment earlier about like you got a super cool photo and then just like a cloud rolls through. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. that, that happened a couple of times as well. Uh, and the bad example in there, like the app says it's going to be a good sunset, but a cloud can roll through at just the wrong time is in there. Um, yeah. And I find that kind of funny. Uh, that mm -hmm. Happens to everybody. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, I didn't even consider that you would have to put, a, put an actual, uh, you know, image to data to correlate. Well, yeah <laughs> it's like a, a like, painstaking process yeah like rain chance and things you can kind of get right right um but something that and if we're going to give it to users and and tell them to go and take photos based on you know this number or this metric i i need to understand what it means um and sometimes you just kind of got to look every day until, <laughs> until you figure it out yeah 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 yeah, Amazing. yeah. Well, um, all right. So we will have links in the show notes to um, where you can get this. Um, but uh, where can we find more information for somebody who doesn't go to the show notes? Obviously, uh, go to the App Store. But mm -hmm. where can we find this on the web? So the uh, the the app will be at photo scout dot app mm -hmm. uh, online. Um, we have we so we have social media i have social media the company has social media um we kind of moved away from twitter a little bit when it became not twitter so if if your users know mastodon we're on there now yep. um uh 
photo scout if, if you just search for photo scout on mastodon okay. will come up or me daniel Kennett, i'm on, on there as well um they're the best places um we because <clears throat> this has been like personally this this app is the like in my career the 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 most craftful app if you like i've built um mm. I'm quite pleased with it. So I'm, I'm on the social media, I'm going to put a bunch of articles on how we built it and some of the neat things that selfishly I spent a ton of time on, but nobody will notice. But if I write an <laughs> article about it, people will notice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Um, so so we'll, we'll put some background information and things up because awesome. it's, it's, especially in this 1.0, like I've chosen what I think the best kind of requirements to start like you know people are going to want weather and sunsets and things but like like in this conversation with you like a bunch of cool ideas have come up and and it, i can't do them all like we, we have to ship this <laughs> yeah to, to to make some money but like the um yeah we've been running a test flight kind of beta on this for about six months now and uh nobody's paying yet so we we, we got to sell it at some point but uh yeah yeah um like we want to hear what people want to do and then add it because because I have a list that's super long, but I, I'm beyond the point that I know what people are really going to want. So actually hearing from folks is going to be super yeah. nice. I think that'd be nice. Yeah. You've got a couple of weeks. You can, you can put our stuff at the top of the list. Yeah. You can just, just get our squeeze stuff Squeeze it in there. So yeah. <laughs> all of the international flight databases yeah. and no fly zones. Yep. In, yeah. In. Okay. Yep. Sure. Yeah. It's all, get on it's right. all just out there. I mean, programming's not hard, is it? Not, not hard no. at all. <laughs> no, it's just copy paste. Right? Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. It's, it's easy. Like photography. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a good computer so I can write good code. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the same logic. <laughs> same logic. Oh my God. It's a beautiful your, app. You must your, have a really good computer. Yeah, your computer must write really great programs. Oh, well, man. Daniel, this has been a lot of fun and, and very uh, educational for me. I, I've never coded anything, and I don't know anything about building apps, but I know how to. I know about using them, and this is an app that I really have enjoyed, and I intend to subscribe to because it's uh, oh, it's going to replace it's going to replace a lot of the apps that I've had to kind of ping around on when I'm yeah. planning and, and executing outdoor photography. So this, this is going to save me some time. So it's worth some money. And it's great to know that it's supporting uh, <clears throat> nice people and, and good people that are looking out at, for our best interests and, and trying to make good products. And it's not going to some um, billionaire who wants to shoot it off into space. <laughs> <laughs> As a random example. Yeah, just a random example. <laughs> No, this has been great. Thank you so much for being on the yeah. show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All, All right. right. That was good. That was good. <laughs>